I used to think that the windshirt was probably the stupidest thing anybody could carry in their backpack. It seemed like a no-brainer to me that if it got a little windy, I would just put on my windshield. Simple, no problem. Then I actually tried using one and the windshirt quickly became one of my favorite pieces of gear. Hey guys, I'm Dan from Shasta Bubba Adventures and here are five quick reasons for you to consider trying out a windshirt. First and most important, it's just very useful to have something to hike in when all you need is a little extra bit of warmth. This applies to most mornings in the backcountry of the Northern Rockies where it's common for the temperature to drop to 40 degrees or less overnight, even in the summer months. Personally, I love hiking in the mornings and the miles just seem to really fly by easily during the hours from 7 to around 10 o'clock. By getting a great start and logging six or seven miles by 10 o'clock, I can be set up for a big mile day, but it's just too cold in that first hour or two to hike in just a t-shirt and shorts. By throwing on a windshirt, I'm just warm enough to be comfortable and enjoy the birds singing and hiking in the beautiful morning light. Backpacking is hard work though, so I do warm up pretty quickly. That leads me to the second reason to use a windshirt in that situation which is that you can sweat in it and it's no problem. It seems like by the time I notice that I'm warming up and could shed a layer, I've already worked up a pretty good sweat. If I wore my puffy layer instead of a windshirt during that first hour of hiking, it would quickly become saturated and would take a lot longer to dry than the windshirt, which only takes a few minutes to dry hanging on the outside of the pack. Also, the windshirt has a very high rate of moisture transfer, so it takes longer to wet out. But a bigger concern would be on a multi-day trip where the buildup of oils and sweat would possibly degrade the insulating ability of either a synthetic or a down puffy. Also, I really don't enjoy sleeping in something that I've sweated in. One of the joys of backpacking is have a clean set of sleeping clothes to change into for the night in camp. And I've learned that sleeping in clothes that have been sweated in gives me the creepy crawlies. I just seem to itch all night and it's miserable, so it works much better to use the windshirt than my puffy layer when hiking in the mornings. Third, wind is a powerful force for cooling the human body, which is why we bother calculating the wind chill factor. Anybody who's done some boating has experienced how quickly you can go from warm to freezing just because the sun went behind a cloud and a little breeze comes up. Same is true with backpacking when we often experience sudden weather changes when the sky clouds over and the wind begins to blow. Even more common in the Rocky Mountains is crossing high altitude passes where it can be completely calm shortly before the ridge, but when you get on top of the ridge, suddenly the wind wants to knock you over. It's great to have a wind shirt stowed in the front pocket of the pack, so you can quickly just put that on when the wind becomes a problem, and it can be stowed just as quickly when you come off the mountain summit or the pass and the wind dies down. Since it packs so small, you can carry it in a pack pocket and not have to open the main body of the pack and rummage around while the weather is getting ugly. Wind shirts have a DWR coating, which is water resistant, so a fourth reason to carry one is for those sudden brief storms that blow through in the high country. It's no substitute for a rain shell, but when things are just misty or a light sprinkle, the windshirt will be enough to keep you warm, if not entirely dry. I've found that my forearms get wet in a light rain, but with the moisture transfer and quick drying ability, I dry out pretty quickly once the rain stops, and it's much more breathable to hike in than the best rain shell. By the way, I think that the hood is one of the best benefits of a windshirt for both light rain and to keep the wind off the head and face. That alone makes a big difference in keeping warm. I do still recommend carrying actual rain gear though for those times when the rain is more serious. The fifth and perhaps the best reason of all to carry it is that not only does a windshirt pack small, but it's super light. My windshirt is the Montbell Tachyon, and I have an older model which only has the half zip and weighs two ounces. The newer version is a full zip, and this part is especially cool. It has hand warmer pockets 
and still only weighs two and a half ounces. I personally prefer the pockets because by the time I get to camp in the evenings, it's almost always getting cool. So I will put on my puffy and the wind shirt while making dinner and setting up. So the pockets are handy to hold little items that I'm working with like a lighter or the SteriPen. If you prefer, the more minimal approach though, Enlightened Equipment has the highly rated copper field without pockets and weighing just two ounces. It also has a full zip. And I'll put links to both of those options in the description below. Now you might think that something so light and thin would not be durable, but I've put my Mont Bell wind shirt through hard use for so many years. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure how old it is, but I'm guessing it's about eight years. Old enough for there to be a mark in the belly area where my hip belt buckle rubs, and it's still working great. Although I really want to upgrade to the version with the pockets, it's hard to justify when this one is still going strong. I just did another video about the benefits of a light fleece pullover and wanted to mention the fantastic option of combining the use of a fleece pullover with the windshirt when hiking in cooler temperatures. With that combo, you can adjust easily to virtually any condition short of a blizzard. It's like having your own thermostat control because you can hike in just the windshirt, just the fleece, or both when nature is particularly irritable during the shoulder season hikes. This is an amazingly versatile combo that's still relatively light and inexpensive. I still always take a puffy layer for sleeping, but have been very comfortable and hiked many happy miles in terrible weather with the fleece pullover and windshirt combo. I do want to take a quick moment to say thanks so much to everyone for subscribing. It makes a huge difference to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.